Hello and welcome to the fourth and last part of the After Effects tutorial series Getting Started with Eye Expressions. In this series you learn how to work with Marmor World Eye Expressions in After Effects. Eye Expressions is an extension that allows you to use expressions without writing a single line of program code. Hence, this expert feature becomes very easy to use and allows you to work in After Effects in a simple, efficient and creative way. In this part we take a look at physics simulations. You learn how to literally throw layers and make some bounce off the ground and some walls. Okay, so today we are looking at some quite interesting eye expressions, namely at the physics simulation eye expressions. So with those you can animate uh, layers and make them move very natural and organic, so like uh, for example throwing stuff uh, and then it bounces from walls and stuff like this. So of course all these movements can be manually keyframed, but if you try to do this it will always look not very realistic and so it takes quite some time and keyframing organic movements is uh, quite complicated. And with eye expressions this is very easy, so you find here in the physics simulation category two subcategories Real-time eye expressions are very fast, yeah, they act really in real-time, and the slower ones are physics simulations that take a little bit longer to compute. This is just a roller coaster with which you can, for example, make texts move into your composition as if they would be the different wagons of some roller coaster or so. I will cover this in some other tutorial. And then in the real-time section you find move in and out. This sounds quite boring, it just means moving layers into the composition and out of it. <coughs> it is a kind of, uh, so there are subtle differences uh, compared to um, just keyframing it. So if you keyframe it you can add easy ease yeah, to, to get the movement a little bit more organic look. And if you use these expressions instead you have some continuous acceleration or deacceleration which makes it quite uh, yeah, feel a little bit different. Anyway, not so important. Then you have the pendulum which is, which is nice to make stuff like swing into the composition or so. Yeah, like a pendulum. And then the stuff we are going to look at today which are these throwing eye expressions with which you can virtually throw layers such that they fly through the air and then bounce off the ground. And we have such variants for 2D uh, layers and for 3D layers. So you can also throw layers in 3D space. And we have alternatives without walls, where you just bounce on the ground, and ones with walls, where you can also bounce from walls. So we are starting with the easy one here, just with the throw 2D. And so in our composition, we have here just this ball layer, and if we apply the throw 2D to the position of this layer, uh, it looks as follows. So it seems that nothing happens, but if you look at the RAM preview, you can see that the ball is falling down, bounces a bit and uh, yeah of course it currently doesn't bounce at the correct position yeah and this is because we need to specify here the ground height so um, currently it bounces here let me see I click here on the info panel now you can see here my cursor coordinates and this is the y value of 500 yeah at which it bounces currently because this is 500 we rather want to bounce it here at the ground which is 664 if you look here so 664 and let me just reapply this and also enable your auto apply to simplify the subsequent subsequent changes. Now you can see it bounces here which is yeah, not yet 100% correct because what you can see is the, the height you specify here is always the height at which this anchor point uh, bounces yeah, or, or uh, where the ground is so uh, the, the anchor point stays then here. And one thing to correct this is we can, I click here shift A to reveal the anchor point. We can move of course the anchor point of the layer yeah, to, to, the, to the bottom of the layer, uh, like this. And then now it nicely bounces as it should. Um, if we do not want to modify the anchor point, if you want to le leave your layer unchanged for whatever reason, let's say you want to rotate it layer around this, later around this point and 
therefore it must stay there. You can of course just um, uh, just this here, yeah. It's like okay, then the ground should not be here, but 45 pixels higher, yeah, because I know that the difference between this and this here is exactly 45. So I can just point put here minus 45. So note that you can always put here arbitrary formulas, and I expressions will compute the result for you once you leave this text. Yeah, if I click here, then it just subtracted this 45 from here. You can, by the way, also say something like times two, and then it duplicates this or divided by two yeah, to, to compute it. So this is very nice. In any text field you have in I-expressions, you can do this kind of computation very conveniently. Anyway, you can see here now it bounces from the ground, which looks quite nice, just by adjusting here this first parameter. And then a second parameter we have here is the elastic bounce. And this is currently 50. If we set this to 100, you can see that it continuously bounces and never stops, yeah, very elastic. And if we set it, for example, to zero, uh, it just falls down once and doesn't move anymore. Yeah? And you can choose <coughs> arbitrary values in between here. Of course, this now does not yet have much to do with throwing. Yeah? It just falls down and that's it. And to really get a throwing behavior, the only thing you need to do is to actually keyframe a throwing movement. In other words, we s I just, uh, for example, say the throw should start here, set a keyframe here, and then I go one or two frames further and say, and now I want to move it in this direction. Yeah. So this means I've keyframed here now such a small movement from here to here, and what the expression does, it continues this movement as if you would have thrown it. Yeah. And Let's say, now I can adjust it, I can say, oh, I want to throw it a little bit, not that fast, maybe just like this. And, yeah, let's look at the RAM preview. This already looks quite nice, and see how fast all of this works. Yeah, it's really working in real time when I take this keyframe here and move it. And then look here, everything updates, updates accordingly. Like this, okay, very nice. Uh, some other things I want to show you are then here these advanced physics parameters. We can change the gravity, so if you rather like you seem to play on the moon or so, you can change the gravity such that this ball is attracted less or more by the ground. And then you have air resistance and friction on ground, which means how much this ball slows down. Here how much it slows down while it is flying in the air. And here how much it slows down while it is sliding on the ground. So if we set this ground friction here, for example, to zero, and play it again, you can see that it actually never stops and just rolls here, uh, yeah, with it without step stopping ever. And then if we do this here, increase this, then it starts slowing down and comes to an end here at some point. And if you want it to uh, stop at a certain position, you can go here very far to the right where it has definitely stopped, and then just adjust here this friction. Yeah, say, okay, if, uh, if we do this a little bit less, let's say three, see it moves um, more to the right, or the fa further you put it here to the right, the earlier it stops. Yeah, so you can very fine-tune this, and once you adjust the settings here, you can see that here it updates accordingly. Okay, the air resistance is basically the same except that it already starts slowing down while it is in the air. So a last option we also have here is the simulation start. So this is by default set to that the simulation should start at the last keyframe. So here, uh, if you want to change this, you can also say it can start at a specific keyframe number or so like at the fourth, fifth keyframe, whatever, or at a certain frame number, and both this frame or keyframe number then can be specified here. But I think in 99% of the cases, simulation start after the last keyframe is fine. Okay, so the one additional thing I want to show you then is also how to get the bouncing at the walls. So for this, you do not need the throw 2D, but the throw 2D with walls I expression. We remember here the ground height, yeah, for this one, because we need to set it again in the same way. So 619. Go to the library, physics simulation, real-time throw 2D with walls. Okay. And then we set this here to 
619 uh, and apply it. And so this I expression is exactly the same as a throw 2D, except that there you have this additional walls section where you can specify two walls, so like a right wall and a left wall, whose positions you can specify here. And at the moment, yeah, there is no bouncing from walls happening here, because we do not really throw very fast such that it would reach such a wall. So let's just change this here and let me select the single keyframe and modify it like this. So now you see it bounces there somehow, but not at the correct places. And this is again because we have to change our wall positions. Yeah? So here, the wall that is here set to 1000 bounces around here, yeah, x position around uh, 1000 here, but it should rather bounce here. So 1178. Um, here, wall position 1100. 78 and apply again. Let me again enable auto apply such that I do not have to apply it all the time. Now you can see it bounces here. Yeah, uh, and again here at the anchor point. Um, so we could move the anchor point to the right, but then we have the problem at, at, at this wall here. So let me just dial in this wall here too. This is at roughly x equals 90. If you log look here, yeah, x equals 90. So we set this wall to 90. And thanks to auto apply, it is now changed. You can see it now also bounces here, but here it bounces too late, yeah. And here also, of course, we cannot move the anchor point to the both this position and this position. So we can either move it here or here, or we directly correct it by adjusting these positions here. Yeah. In other words, here we need this wall to virtually be this size more to the right. And remember that the difference between here and here is 45 pixels in this case, so I can just say plus 45. And now it bounces correctly here. Yeah. Very nice. And the same also here. We also need this wall to virtually move 45 pixels in this direction. So in this case, minus 45. Adjust it, and now you can see that it nicely bounces from the ground uh, from the walls and see really how fast this computes yeah it's uh, really in real time that all of this animation uh, takes and <coughs> remember how uh, how difficult it would be to really keyframe such a kind of movement yeah to, g to get it that realistic would be uh, really difficult one little detail i want to look at is Let's zoom here a little bit in. If you want to verify that your wall positions are correct, it might be that you think something is wrong, although it is not. So here you can see it actually never, there is never a frame where it touches the wall. And this is not because we've set the wall position uh, wrong, so it's really the correct position here. It's just that the point where it hits the wall is in between two frames. Yeah, think of if you would film this scenario with a real video camera, then it could well be that you never have a frame in your video where the ground, where the b wall, or the ball is really here at the wall. Yeah, because you just have 25 frames or 24 maybe per second, and so it's rather unlikely that you have one frame where it is exactly here. And so you can see this if you enable motion blur. So let's enable here motion blur. You can also see that motion blur works nicely with these physics simulations, no problem. Yeah. And um, in this case, you can see that it already comes a bit closer. And let me really uh, set the motion blur much stronger. So I just go here to composition settings, advanced and set the sh shutter angle to 360 to get a more heavy um, Let's zoom in here a bit, a more, more heavy motion blur. And now you can see that the here's a ball really at some point in time uh, touches the wall. Yeah, here, here you can see in this frame it touches the wall, but if you have no motion blur enabled, you cannot see it because it's just here. Yeah, and with motion blur it looks like this, and in the next frame it is already here. Yeah, so you can also not see it without this motion blur. So 
Side note at this point, just don't be irritated if you never see a frame where it really touches the wall or the ground. With motion blur, you will see that your wall actually or your ball actually bounces at the correct position. Uh, let me just again change these motion blur settings because this is really not very realistic. So I go back here to a shutter angle or motion blur strength of just 180. Um, like this. And now let's again take a RAM preview of what we have. We can see even with motion blur it computes really fast and everything uh, stays pretty interactive. Uh, so very nice. One last thing I want to show you here is that once you've finished your animation like this, you can fine-tune it a bit by deforming your object, yeah, such that it looks a little bit more elastic. We can do this by uh, going here to the scale. I hit S to reveal the scale. And then, let me also zoom, zoom in here a bit. We go to the point right before it hits the wall. This is this point here, yeah and set a keyframe on the scale. And then I remove here this thing to control each of the two points independently. And then, then this is just after it has hit the wall. And then I can say, okay, I now want to deform the ball like this. Yeah, this is a bit much, but maybe something like 80 or 85%. And then over one or two frames, it, this was a bit much, wo one or two frames, it goes back to its original scale, yeah, like this. And if we take a look at this, you can see at the moment where it hits the wall, it deforms a little. And this makes it look a little bit more realistic, yeah? a little bit more organic. And of course, you can do the same here by modifying then the Y value of the scale uh, when it bounces at, uh, at the ground. Yeah? You can see the, the, the hitting here looks a little bit more realistic still. And of course, the last thing that now is missing is adding some sound effects when it hits something here. Um, I'm not going to do this now, uh, but leave this uh, up to you. But I hope I could convince you that these physics simulations are really powerful tools. They are very fast and allow you to do basically completely new kinds of animations that you, without such an extension, can very hardly do. So keyframing such a kind of motion would be very hard and cumbersome and it would be really difficult to get it that realistic. Okay, so this is the end of this tutorial series. I can just promise you that I'm also going to record further tutorials to show you other of these eye expressions. So of the over 50 eye expressions, you've seen now just a few of them, a few highlights. And I hope that you have now uh, some fun exploring the other eye expressions. And of course, that you join in when I have recorded the next tutorial.